Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, I am Titlar and this is the beginning of a new series a series very dear to me because I like very much this kind of games reminds me the games that I played in my youth and which was a long time ago now and a dear, uh, a dear uh, character close to my heart as well Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot and we got the London case game we are going to try this it's a first taste of this game I have never I've never played any kind of Hercule Poirot game and but I've played a lot in my youth point-and-click adventure games so let's see what we are dealing here with and I've never tried the game I only navigated through the options because the, the the sound was very loud and I've turned off the music because I don't know if the music has copyright issues or not so let's keep the deduction ints on why not let's try not to use it so let's start a new game and let's see what this is all about prologue the chip detective Hercule Poirot leaves the shore of Belgium on a new assignment bound for London be sure to talk to all characters and explore every inch of each environment for clues. Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was too fast. Detective Hercule Poirot? Ah, Chief Commissioner. We got a cutscene. So On the contrary, it is a most convenient time. Let's watch it. The safe passage of a painting. Tell me everything. I'm excited. I'm excited for uh, this new series and a new game and uh, kind of game, a genre of game that is close to my heart. This point and click and adventure games, which I like very much and I've played a lot in my youth, like Day of the Tentacle, Indiana Jones. Uh, Full Throttle, uh, Broken Swords, all kind of games of point and click games. Ambition, hmm. Hopefully there's a tutorial, because I see the game is complex, not your average typical point and click. Lust. Ambition, envy, lust, greed. The seven sins. Three of those portrayed here. Unfortunately, no music because, as I stated, I don't know if we got copyright issues or not. If man was meant to travel the oceans in such conditions, he would surely have been given his own fins. A distraction is what one needs. Where is that blasted contact? How is one to prepare for an assignment if one does not have all of the required information? Indeed, Poirot, indeed. Very well. I shall wait no longer. Okay, let's wait no longer then. Beautiful, isn't she? Pardon, monsieur? The open water. There really is nothing quite like her. Hmm. When one suffers from the mal de mer, the beauty, as you say, is rather more a burden. Forgive me, I just can't imagine being scared of the ocean in this day and age. The potential to see the world is open to even the ordinary man like us. I can assure you, monsieur, it is not a matter of being scared. And as for ordinary... I didn't mean to offend, mister. I am... Hmm. Forgive me, madame. No harm done. Accidents happen. I... 
My cigarette case, where is it? I didn't see. You thought I wouldn't notice? A young lady traveling alone, an easy target for you, I bet. This is a little wasted. I'm sure the young lady would appreciate the help of two handsome strangers. Hmm. Prologue. The ship. Okay, I have to turn music on because these kind of games without music are not. Use left mouse button to explore the season. Try finding the missing cigarette case. Okay. Let me just turn on the music then. Right there. Okay. Okay, we walk with WSD. Okay. Or we can point and click. Okay. Uh -huh. Reading. An excellent way to distract oneself from the surrounding ocean. Accompanied with E, however. I cannot agree with the choice of beverage. A known item. Oh, okay, that's the menu. Okay. Right click goes to the menu. Oh. Some objects can be viewed in more detail. Try finding all points of interest on this obj object. Cigarette case. So that's the objective. Okay. We got move. Rotate, zoom in, zoom out, and select. Huh. Dated 1855, it's old, but is in near perfect condition. Okay, we found one clue, I guess. Hmm. The mechanism used to open the case. Yeah? Can't we open it? Guess not. Ah. An ordinate family crest, the lion, traditional associated with courage, nobility, and the British. Okay. A silver cigarette case adorned with a family crest. Collected items are added to your inventory. Left clicked on the suitcase there. To check this at any time. Let's click it. And we got the cigarette case. Okay. Okay. Return the cigarette case to the passenger suitcase. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So if we click, yeah, we move. Can I go upstairs? Nope. We got this game. This child game, I don't know the, the name in English. Oh, what's that? To cabin. Huh. I have no reason to go there now. Okay. To dining room. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to go there in now. Okay, I'm just exploring, guys. Okay, we can highlight while we walk. Telescope. Oh. A well-crafted brass telescope for viewing the open ocean and stars above. Yes, very nice indeed. Very cool. I click there. Where is he going? Nowhere. He's returning, okay, he's moving on his own. Poirot has a mind of his own. Now he's going there, but <laughs> I have no reason to go there now, okay. Can I talk to the passenger first? How could a porter be so clumsy? Let's give her a hand. Let's. Let's talk to the porter then. First, porter. I didn't drop it on purpose. Yeah, I know. You are wasted, man. That's the passenger. Can we... Oh. Passenger suitcase. Let's interact first. 
A young lady should not be left to gather her own things. Indeed. So we have to return the cigarette case to the passenger oh suitcase. What a mess. So let's talk to the passenger first. No, she's not talking. Okay, let's see if we got anything else around the back. Nope. Oh, you have no reason to go there. They are right. Right, right. Let's use them. And let's select the cigarette case. You are returning home? I am. But how did you know that? I'm a detective. Oh, shooting star. Okay, select the correct answers to progress. Much like your investigation, you may need to keep searching for clues before you can solve this fully. How do you know I'm returning home? Crimson hair, such striking hair. Crimson hair, lion emblem, date engraving. It's all but in perfect condition. The, the British, yeah, lion emblem. Besides your educated accent, the crest that adorns your cigarette case, it is of British origin. Yeah, we are heading to to Britain. Very observant. It's the crest of my family, and the case belonged to my mother. I take it everywhere with me. Okay. So much shooting stars. Miss Florence Farquhar, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Florence Farquhar. The pleasure is ours. That looks like everything. Except for my hmm. powder case. Now I have to hunt for the power case of the lady of the Florence lady here. Is this what you're Who? looking for? Who are you? It is. Thank you. Miss yes. Miss Babanyan. Babanyan. Anastasia Babanyan. Anastasia Babanyan. Anastasia. What a beautiful name. Indeed. It was my grandmother's. Well, that's everything now. I can't thank you all enough for your help. I'd be happy to escort you. Here, I'll take your back. Hmm. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Cabin 4. I'll be right behind you. The gentleman is trying his luck. Anastasia, perhaps I can offer you a token of my gratitude in the bar later. That will be, that would be lovely. Lovely, yeah. And you, Mr. Poirot. Detective Hercule Poirot, at your service. A detective? I was not expecting to meet such a distinguished gentleman on board. Hmm. I did not expect to meet someone of Russian descent on a ship between the great city of Antwerp and Dover. I never mentioned where I was from either. How do you know I'm of Russian descent? And Anastasia relates to Anastasius. The name Anastasia is the Russian form of the Greek name Anastasius, meaning resurrection. Eastern European accent, I presume she is from or closely related to a family with Eastern European origins. Striking beauty. I cannot recall being taken aback by such beauty before. I think the name. One did not have to. Anastasia, of Russian origin meaning resurrection. And here was me thinking I was special. <laughs> Your knowledge of my heritage is most impressive. Most impressive, indeed. And I'll take that as my cue to leave. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Florence. It seems it's just us remaining. Hmm. Let's have a drink, then, Anastasia. I would very much like to hear stories from your homeland. Perhaps you would yes. join me in the restaurant. As charming as that would be, I'm feeling rather tired. Hmm. It must be all the sea air. Must be. Then I shall leave you to your slumber. Adieu. Adieu. Okay, cool. A little slow start here. Let's hope the game picks up.
As much as I enjoyed the delights of the restaurant, I still found my mind drifting back <laughs> to Mademoiselle Babania. She really was quite charming. Indeed. Is Poirot falling in love? I spent the first part of this excursion neglecting my duties. It's time to retrieve my notebook from the safe and begin. Hmm. The combination was not a difficult one to remember. 1815, the Battle of Waterloo. Waterloo! I was defeated in one the wall. 1815, hmm. okay. 18? Fifteen. Cool. Et voilà. Time to Whoa. One cannot ignore such a blood curdling scream. Indeed. My mother's cigarette case. It's gone. Again? How could somebody do this? Mademoiselle, I ask that you take a moment to calm. You're a detective, of course. What luck. What luck? As luck would have it, <coughs> one of Belgium's finest. Now, I require as many details of the crime as you can offer. I came to my cabin and began unpacking. I couldn't get the safe working, but the gentleman that helped me with my luggage showed me how it works. Huh. Afterwards, I went for a brief walk, and when I returned, the safe was open, and my cigarette case was gone. That gentleman is very suspicious. We must consider the suspect list. Those who were aware of the cigarette case's existence. Anastasia, the porter, and the gentleman. That can only be those who were up on the deck when my luggage spilled. Indeed. Miss Babani, the porter, yourself. And the gentleman. And your helpful stranger. Indeed. Yes, of course. I ask that you gather them for me. And while you are absent, I shall begin my investigation in here. Indeed. Mademoiselle permits. Whatever you need to do to find it. Okay. Let's search for clues. Who stole Florence's cigarette case? The theft of Mademoiselle Farquhar's cigarette case has plagued me for long enough. I must considering everything I must consider everything I know and the truth deduce the true thief. Whenever Poirot encounter uncovers an interesting area of investigation, a mind map is launched. Here you can see all of the evidence related to your very first investigation. Using your mouse, try highlighting the piece of evidence to see Poirot interpretation of them. Keys to the room. Mademoiselle Farquhar's set of keys to her cabin given to her when boarding the ship, no doubt. Was alone in her cabin. Mademoiselle Farquhar had not had any visitor to her cabin before her cry to help, that is. Knew the safe combination code. Mademoiselle Farquhar must have been aware of the safe combination code to open the safe in the first place. Shoot. Can I return there? Hmm, I cannot. Unfortunately. Okay. So, we have to explore the cabin. Explore the cabin for more clues. You can use to rotate the camera whenever you are exploring indoor space. Some clues may be easier to spot from certain angles. Okay. The safe. Mm. Open and empty. The door remains open and the contents missing. Ah. If the thief left any signs of accessing the safe, perhaps a fingertip on the dial will be it. There are no clear or obvious signs that the safe has been tampered with. The thief must have found another way in. Ah. 
Huh. This must have only become obvious once the safe was, was the safe was moved. Perhaps the cleaner should reassess their standards. Nine of dust. Okay. All discovered. I thought you would be returning with the gentleman also. Huh. Nowhere to be found. Let me the guess. The gentleman wanted to speak to the porter alone first. Hmm. I was unaware he is also a detective. He's not a policeman. He works in insurance, I believe. Hmm. It appears I shall be spending my time chasing amateur detectives around the ship. <laughs> yeah. Mademoiselle, I would like to start with who had access to the safe combination. The porter? No one. It was in a sealed envelope that was waiting for me when I arrived. I memorized it and threw the paper overboard. Four, three, eight, five. It's really not that difficult to remember. A similar envelope was waiting for me upon my arrival. The date of the Battle of Waterloo, as I recall. Every safe, although identical, must have a different combination. Mm -hmm. After the gentleman helped me with the safe, he left. If the mysterious gentleman is behind the theft, he went to great lengths to hide his fingerprints, but did little to hide his movements in Mademoiselle Farquhar's cabin. Indeed. There are many questions that require answers. Answers I believe he may hold. Mm-hmm. New mind map unlocked. Investigating a theft was one of the last things I expected from my journey to London. But as an officer of the law, it's my duty to find who could have stolen Mademoiselle Farquhar's cigarette case and why. Notice the number icon has been updated. Try connecting two pieces of evidence to form a deduction. Pay attention to the information given to succeed. Use to highlight notes and to start stop linking. Okay. Ship cabin. Florence Farquhar residence while on board. No sign of tampering. There are no clear or obvious signs that the safe has been tampered with. The thief must have found another way win in. Dial. If the theft left any signs of or accessing the safe, perhaps a fingerprint on the dial will be it. Hmm. So things are beginning. Well done, you just yeah. made your first deduction. Linking existing evidence gives you brand new evidence to use in your investigation. Use right mouse button to return to the scene. Things are beginning to become clearer. Given the state of the safe, I assume the thief simply entered the code and took the contents. Indeed. Thief knew the code to the safe, given the state of the safe. Uh, I don't think we are able to link this. Yeah. Okay, let's get out. Try exploring the rest of the ship, getting evidence and making deductions until you are able to solve your first investigation. Remember, you can left click on to view your investigation and related actions and suitcase to something to do something there. Let's see this. Okay, we got talk to suspects, inspect the ship and check for fingerprints. I didn't see that, I think. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Newspaper article. An article from the London Illustrated News. The changing world in which we live in and who is permitted to enjoy it. Florence Farquhar. Fine art, theatre and literature as well as other mediums that are synonymous with the arts 
have always been considered a middle and upper class area of enjoyment and pastime, with those that fall outside of that desired audience being shunned at the door. Even now, having taken the steps into the 20th century, there are those that continue to exclude the inexperienced and uneducated work, the working class, that have not had the privilege of seeing the true beauty of a Monet or reading the powerful and relevant words of Charles Dickens in all their splendor. We now sit at the dawn of a new age, with London continuing to solidify its name as a pioneer, bringing art, music and literature to a modern audience that care more about the contents of the art form in front of them than the contents of their pockets. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Supper. Let's watch the supper. Let's eat the supper. Ah. It seems that Mademoiselle Farquhar chose not to dine in the restaurant. Indeed. Florence Mascara. Makeup remains a mystery to me, but judging by Mademoiselle Farquhar fashion sense, this must be a popular shade. Okay, we got some inventory piece. Let's see what it is. Okay, that's a mascara. Okay, some makeup, I, th I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Luggage. I'm surprised oh. Mademoiselle Farquhar luggage made in it this far without spilling with the amount she packed. She packed. Cool, cool, cool. What's this? Door handle. To deck. Huh. Okay, we got some evidence. We got the scratches must have been made by something sharp, a blade perhaps. Indeed. Huh. The light is catching part of a fingerprint. I do not have the appropriate tools with me, but I'm sure I can find a way to reveal the full print. Okay. Powder case here. One must be careful with such delicate powder. A horrible mess with the cause, although it could be... Oh, we could search for fingerprints with that. I think. I think. We can talk to Anastasia here. Why can I only... Oh, rotate this. Okay. So let's talk to Anastasia. Mademoiselle Babanya, I'm sorry we must continue our conversation under these circumstances. On the contrary, what fantastic luck that you are here. Now I get to see you at work. Hmm. Please walk me through your movements since our first meeting. I'm afraid I've done very little actually. After we parted ways, I went to my cabin. I had barely unpacked and I was fast asleep on the bed. Okay. Alone? Ha! <laughs> Poirot, you naughty boy. That is a rather personal question, don't you think, detective? I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. A poor attempt at a joke. Yes, I was alone. There is no need to be nervous. And then? And then? And then I was woken up by Florence's scream. I have never heard something so terrifying. <laughs> okay. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. Indeed. I shall not take up any more of your time. Let's talk to the victim here. Mademoiselle Farquhar, I shall have your cigarette case returned to you before we reach the English coast. Okay. I hope so, detective. I do hope so too. The newspaper article. Me, reading my own article. I must say you raise a very interesting point. Art should have no social boundaries. The creativity is for all to enjoy. Indeed. Thank you for saying that. I wish everyone was as open-minded. 
There appears to be scratches on the cabin doors lock. Who could have caused these scratches? I don't know, man. Let's not. Perhaps there are more clues to be found. Indeed. Indeed. I will be tending in a professional capacity, but I would have very much liked an invite of my own as a souvenir of my time in London. The committee at the Royal Edward Gallery requests the pleasure of the presence of Miss Florence Farquhar to the unveiling of an extraordinary new exhibition from the Musée Royal de Beaux-Arts de Belgique, including the Penitent Magdalene. Okay, the formal invitation on one side, blank on the other. Cool. Okay, we cannot... Okay, let's use the powder here, then, on the dial. Perhaps the powder case I found may be of some use, perhaps. Some would say it's a rather rudimentary way to, of taking fingerprints, I say quite genius. No signs of any fingerprints on the dial. I may be dealing with a professional thief. Okay. Can we use the mascara? Perhaps the powder case I found may be of some use. Where is the sense in that? So let's use on the door handle the powder case. Perhaps upon the case, uh, some use. Rather, I say quite genius. Magnifique. A fingerprint. Now to determine who it belongs to. Indeed. You found one, detective? Oh, how exciting. I suppose you'll want to take mine. To rule me out, I mean. Indeed. I was thinking about that, Anastasia. Let's take her fingerprint. You could ask me anything. Would you allow me a sample of Can your I fingerprint? Be used as your guinea pig? Yeah. I would not dare compare you to a guinea pig. Would you be so kind? The answer is yes, of course. I have nothing to hide. Cool. How are you going to take and compare your fingerprints? Florence? This is not right, come on, concentrate. Uh. This is not right. How the hell? Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps, indeed. Of course. Whatever you... The Gala Invitation. I'm really quite excited about it. You have been invited to a preview at the Royal Edward Gallery. A small world indeed. Will you be in attendance? It's actually one of the reasons that I have been in Belgium. I was lucky enough to have a sneak peek at some of the pieces on show. I'll also be writing a follow-up article on the success of it. Fingers crossed! Hmm. Lucky indeed. I am sure it will be a great success. Okay. Merci, mademoiselle. Okay. Let's head off to the deck then. Not able to gather any more info on here. Okay, what's this? Oh, here's the boys. 
I'm sorry, but it's just not acceptable, Mark. Mark? I've apologized to the lady. And that makes everything all right? It was an accident. An accident that could have been avoided if you hadn't spent your morning drinking. Yeah. Gentlemen, you are behaving like two young boys in the schoolyard. It ends now. Let's talk to the passenger. Is Mademoiselle Farqua aware you are acting as her knight in shining armor? I wouldn't go as far as that. I think perhaps we have got off on the wrong foot. You are my prime suspect, ma'am. I'm Arthur Hastings. Would Mr. Harter. Hastings. She requested you to follow her to her cabin, no? No? Oh, yes, she did, but I wanted to speak with the porter privately. This was part of your investigation? Well, I'm not a detective. I was just a... Uh... Then perhaps you will answer some questions that are vital to my investigation as a detective. What can I do for you? Your work is in insurance? It is. Is my employment relevant to Miss Farquhar's missing cigarette case? I hope you will entertain me for a moment. What would you say the chances of proving a theft in a case such as this one are? Well, a report from a detective like yourself will certainly help expedite her insurance claim. As I thought. It had perhaps not crossed her mind before. But being amongst an officer of the law and an insurance man, the idea of insurance fraud may have appeared appealing. Yeah. Indeed. When Florence... Miss Farquhar told me that something had gone missing from her safe. I thought it must have been the porter. How so? I'd rather not say with him standing just there. It is not I that controls the volume of your voice. You must have noticed the smell of beer on his breath. I wouldn't put it past a man that drinks on the job to steal. That is quite the accusation. And if you were correct, you wish to settle the matter with him privately? I wanted to give him what for, but uh, I suppose I lost my nerve. <laughs> Tell me more about your I'm work. What some would call a middleman. I oversee the handling of recently sold items and put the buyer in contact with an appropriate insurer. The mention of insurance initially sparked my attention. But the more he talks of his work, I believe he may be my mysterious contact from Lloyd's of London. It was your work that took you to Belgium? I can't go into too many details, but I'm actually delivering a rather special piece of art to London. I'm meant to be meeting an official of some sorts that's supposed to be helping me, but no sign of them yet. Hmm. And it is confirmed. It concerns me that my supposed trusted colleague has found himself involved in the middle of my investigation. I will continue to withhold my true identity and see how Monsieur Hastings' involvement concludes. Okay. Merci, Monsieur. So, Mr. Harter Hastings. This really is an exciting case. Probably is not uh, the culprit Sparkle, here. Please don't hesitate to ask. Your enthusiasm has been noted. So, hmm. yeah, let's interview Mark Allard, the porter. I'm sorry, but it's just not again. Apologize, and that why? What a bug, man! Hmm. Okay, no new thing here. Oh. Unfortunately, there's no new things here as well. So, let's interview the porter then. Perhaps you and I can have a more civilized discussion. I'll tell you the same as I told your friend. I will not be bullied. 
Gut. Intimidation is not my forte. What is, is uncovering the identity of criminals and making sure they are punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that's me? <laughs> that is what I am yet to conclude. Is it usual for one to consume alcohol while at work? Who said anything about drinking alcohol? You smell it. It does not take a detective to identify the distinct odor on one's breath. Indeed. Maybe one to calm my nerves. My sea legs aren't here yet, that's all. How did you come to injure your hand? I was in the cargo hold, cutting something with my knife, and it slipped. No harm done. Hmm. I'm not quite sure you understand what that means. So now I am stupid and a drunk? Do you have the knife in question on your person now? I don't. He stole it and won't return it. He? Who's he? We, oui, monsieur. I shall let you return to your duty. Who's he? The only he I know is Mr. Hastings. Do you have the knife? What can I do for you? Monsieur, the porter's knife. May I see it? Thank you. Oh. Hmm. A standard handle for such a knife. Aha. The tip has been dulled and there appears to be the slightest metallic flake still clinging. Okay, so the porter is the culprit. No doubts in my mind now. Hmm. Evidence of blood. This must be what Monsieur Allard cut himself on. Cool, cool, cool. A sailor's man's spike. With a foldable blade and a stained spike tip. Okay, we got some new clues here. Whoo! Okay. Insurance claim an opportune moment for a valuable item to go missing. Anastasia. And, uh, Anastasia Babanin sleeping in her cabin. Mademoiselle Babanin says she was quick to lay her head to rest, although there is no proof of her claim. Mr. Hastings, Harter Hastings. Working in his cabin. Monsieur Hastings was working alone in his cabin since helping Mademoiselle Farquhar with her luggage, so he says. Had the knife, although Monsieur Hastings was quick to offer up the knife, he must have known what position he was putting himself in by handling it. Could have broken in with knife, a knife such as the porters will be the perfect tool to use to break into a cabin. Marcalart. In the cargo hold, with no witness to confirm his movement, I cannot rightly confirm his alibis. Okay, 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 okay. Talk to Anas Anas Anastasia now. Let's go. Let's talk to her. Let's see if we can take now the fingerprint out of her. Anastasia. You could ask me anything. Simple. Am I to be used? I would not dare. The yeah, answer we've is already you. seen that. And there's no way in hell that I'm going to be able to get the fingerprints out of her. Still. Huh. Okay. Inspect the ship. Oh, we have some more options here. No, we don't. Oh, we do! Okay, what we had here. 
Anastasia Babanin, intellectual and conducting herself in a fitting manner for a woman of the times. Anastasia is an inquisitive mystery to Poirot when they first met on the board ship. Little is known about her, but she is one, she is one that Poirot is keen to become more familiar with. Confirmed evidence, striking beauty. Florence Farquhar. Florence Farquhar is a fashionable young woman and one of London's leading art critics. She writes a regular art column for the London Illustrated News, a position she prides herself on. No confirmed evidence. Harter Hastings, employed by Lloyds of London, Hastings in the insurer overseeing the handling of the painting and low end of the artworks to the museum. It is in this capacity that he first met Poirot, traveling between Antwerp and Dover. Marcalart. In the early 40s, Mark is a porter working on the ship sailing between Antwerp and Dover. No confirmed evidence again. So we still got to inspect the ship, I see. Hmm. There's no more stuff here. Oh, we have here the sink. Huh. One must present themselves at their best at all time. The mirror is a little high for my stat stature, however. So, nothing on the sink, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't see anything else here, man. Can we talk to Florence? Yes. Was the cigarette case insured? Insured? Oh no, why would I have it insured? Anything of substantial monetary value. I'll stop you there, detective. The cigarette case itself is hardly worth two pennies, but to me, it's priceless. Has anyone been alone in your not cabin? For a second. At least not with my permission. You probably think this silly, naive woman has left her valuables out, or I've just misplaced them. But I assure you, that is not me. It had not crossed my mind for even a moment. Mademoiselle. There appears to be scratches on the door on the cabin's door lock, but we cannot do anything here. Unfortunately, we cannot see anything more here. We got some new clues, so we can expect that at least. Let's do just that. Ship evidence, okay. Okay. None of the suspects knew Florence's safe combination code. I can confirm that none of the suspects used the code to access the safe. So we can link this, probably, with this. Logical thinking shall always prevail. Nice. Although the suspect did not have the code to the safe, there is still the chance that it was cracked open. The safe was cracked. All the yep. We got some new information in here as well. We got some contradiction here with Miss Florence. Mademoiselle Farquhar is clearly upset, but his sentimental value appears to outweigh his monetary. Okay. No, I didn't see what the objective was. Talk to Anastasia, inspect the ship. Okay. Still gotta inspect the ship. We Can we ask monsieur. you more questions? We don't. I shall let you return to your
unfortunately we cannot rotate here we can play a song trying to rotate what can I do for you oh I've already seen that hmm I've already seen that. Hmm. Oh, indeed. Where, uh, what am I missing here? Let's go to here. Can I combine items? We cannot, unfortunately. And we cannot see items any further. Okay. Good to know. Hmm. Already lost here, huh? Oh. What about this way? Can I go this way? No. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? That's a flag of sorts. I cannot inspect that flag. Whew, I'm a little lost at here, man. Already. Already lost, huh? Oh. Yeah, nothing to do here. We should be able to grab Mr. Anastasia there. Uh -huh. The fingerprints, but unfortunately I'm not able to do that. I don't know why. But I, oh, what's this? The sink. Yeah, we already saw, saw that. Mm hmm. Of course. Whatever. Well, let's try this. Mark. Currently, the only suspect I have for the scratches is the porter, Mark. Why the porter? On the sailing knife and cut on hand. This is not right. Come on, concentrate. So... Hmm. Alcoholic and owns the sailing knife. Yeah. Looking at the condition of the door and its lock, I cannot rule out a drunken attempt to open it. Yeah, indeed. Okay, we got some more clues then. Drunken break in. Looking at the condition of the door in its lock, I cannot rule out. Yep. Can we link here? We cannot. Okay, let's talk to Anastasia then. You could ask me anything. Sample. Am I to be used? I would not doubt. The answer is yes. Unfortunately, we don't have anything to do here. And what about Anastasia, right? 
Yeah, I know it's not right, but I don't have any other mean to do that. Huh. Oh, okay. The thief knew exactly how to keep their identity hidden. I must now take fingerprint sample from the others. Taking Mademoiselle Farquaz will allow me to compare what prints are there, are hers, with those that may belong to our thief. Followed by samples from Monsieur Hastings and Monsieur Allard. The only fingerprint that remains on the door is the one left by Mademoiselle Farquaz upon returning to her cabin. The culprit continues to evade me. There must be something I have not considered. Okay. Okay, we got no fingerprints on dial. So the safe was cracked. Was not cracked. Come now. Think on what. Nope. Okay. No useful fingerprints on the door handle. Oh, this with this. Another yeah. success. I never doubted myself. Okay. The thief has been careful to cover their tracks. Okay. Tracks covered. This will not get me any closer to my... Okay. Sorry. The answer was staring me in the face. The thief's attempt to fool me and cover their tracks only showed they knew exactly what they were doing. Okay. Export break-in, so no drunk break-in. I can confirm that the porter was nothing more than a scapegoat for the thief. The erratic scratches on the door lock were made to make me believe he was behind the theft. Hmm. Hastings then. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Cool. My initial suspicion that the porter may have been the thief's is beginning to waver. Would someone go to the lengths of framing him? No. Oh. I had a new porter framed. Okay, cool. No news here. I must consider the suspects I have in front of me. Monsieur Hastings. Yeah. He is keen to impress Mademoiselle Farquhar and claims that he was alone in his cabin working since. Marc Allard, the porter. Evidence suggests a rather amateur attempt to break into the safe, which in his intoxicated state would make sense. But it was just a ruse. The safe was opened quite masterfully, leaving only signs of a poorly attempted break-in. Mademoiselle Babagna, a new friend to Mademoiselle Farquhar, who appeared at a most convenient time. Indeed. I cannot see a motive besides the obvious value of the cigarette case, but Mademoiselle Farquhar has made it quite clear the value is of a sentimental nature. Perhaps the best thing for me would be to return to my cabin to think. I fear my legs and perhaps even my evening meal will not last much longer <laughs> amidst these waves. Perhaps. Okay, so with that, with Poirot going to rest. How goes the investigation? Oh, let's continue the detective, talk. Better yet, a great detective will find motive, means, and opportunity. She found it! Miss Babani found it! Oh, thank heavens! I was on my way to speak with the captain when I saw something shining underneath one of those pipes. Yeah, exactly. 
Strange that it was not spotted earlier by any one of us while on the ship's deck. Maybe the thief was scared and dumped it for fear of being caught red-handed. Indeed. Miss Babanyan, Anastasia. Anastasia. You saved the day. I can't thank you enough. And you, of course, detective. I find Mademoiselle Babanyan's explanation of finding the cigarette case rather coincidental. But without any definitive proof, yeah. I cannot suggest anything otherwise. The cigarette case has been returned and the coast is in sight, which is what is important. Indeed. Although there still remains a part of me that craves the truth. I suppose you can chalk that up as a victory. A victory for Mademoiselle Farqua, but not in the eyes of the law. Well, if anyone asks, I'll confirm what a splendid job you did. Very kind, monsieur. While we are on the matter of truth, Monsieur Arthur Hastings, you are here to oversee the transportation of the penitent Magdalene painting, are you not? How on earth? You are aware of my employment, but not of my true identity. Detective Hercule Poirot. Wait, are you the official that I was supposed to have met on board? Indeed. Oui, monsieur. Please, accept my apologies for keeping my true identity hidden. But I had to be sure your involvement with the theft was purely coincidental. When it comes to the nature of our work, trust must be earned. A little unorthodox, but I suppose I understand. So you can trust me now? Yes. It continues to grow. <laughs> well, we have a couple of weeks before the gala, so hopefully... By then, you'll trust me with your life. Yeah. One can hope. Okay, chapter one is done, guys. And I'll be ending the, the video here. Let's read this. Chapter one, the gala, Detective Hercule Poirot and Mr. Hay... Oh, I couldn't read it. And we'll leave it for... We got the... The game itself now beginning. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, we'll see this cutscene in the next episode, for in tomorrow. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel, it will help a lot, guys. And I will appreciate that so much. But for now, that's all. I'm Titlar, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye and take care. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. Also read the description below, where you will find ton of useful information and links regarding the contents of this video.